<laughs> so I'm an adventure sports photographer. Um, should I share some images at this point? Yeah, go about? ahead. Yeah, let's let's get people a, a sense of what you do because it's awesome. Let me find that thing. Here there we, we go. go. So Michael Clark, as you can see here, you guys are seeing images on your end. Yep. Okay. All right. So. You know, I'm an adventure photographer, which I started out in the climbing world, photographing climbing of all different sorts, ice climbing, rock climbing, mountaineering. I love that um, photo, then, by the way. Sorry. I just, I think that's uh, one okay. of your greatest stuff. I love it. Go ahead. It is one of my favorites too, for sure. Uh, one of my top five. Uh, yep. But, you know, whitewater kayaking, I, I photograph these days pretty much every adventure sport. And I've been doing this for, this is my 25th year. So Goodness for a me. while. Um, you know, portraiture is also a huge part of it. You know, this is a big wave surfer, Josh Redman. But just to give you guys a taste, I also shoot surfing. I'm based in Santa Fe, New Mexico, so I'm nowhere near the ocean. <laughs> but I travel to Hawaii in big wave spots all over the world, you know, on occasion. Uh, landscapes in between adventure shoots, fun stuff. And, you know, we were just talking about these guys, the Red Bull Air yeah. Force. We've got a shoot coming up with them next week, actually. Um, so I've shot a lot with these guys. These are, this is also a wingsuit skydiver so in front awesome. of the sun or the, yeah, the moon. That's yeah, the sun. Oh, really? Oh, it looks like this sun. is the full moon. And this was in Los Angeles. They, they flew through downtown Los Angeles. Crazy. Shit. I don't want to know. I don't want to know what your settings were on this one. Cause I can imagine all the complexities of getting that shot. That is not an easy shot to get. It was like a <laughs> thousand millimeter lens from <laughs> six miles away. It was great. That's a crazy shoot. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of stuff for Red Bull, uh, as you can see here, some stuff for Fujifilm. Uh, this was shot for the GFX 100, but just to give you guys an idea of what I photograph, lots of world-class athletes doing their thing. Here's, Another um, image of the Red Bull Air Force. Uh, so let's see what else we got. Surfing. So this is Piahi Jaws, one of the biggest waves yep. in the world. North Shore, you know, Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque. So a little bit of everything. Um, this is Tahiti, Red Bull Air Force. Wow, they're in here a bunch. Um, yep. I've shot yep. with them maybe 12 or 15 times. That's probably why they're in here a lot. Is that the crazy helicopter that does the full 360? I've seen that. It is. Well, and just Felix insane. Baumgartner's the guy who jumped out of space and shut down the yep, internet yep. is the guy mm -hmm. flying the helicopter. Oh, is that right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool guy. Um, I don't know. A little bit of everything here, just to give you a taste. You know, portraiture, as I said earlier, is a huge part of most shoots just because the athletes need those, the companies need those. Uh, yeah, and that's so actually really well interesting. Rounded. That's actually a really interesting point that I, I wanted to kind of as you're showing these images, I don't, I don't want to forget it for the future, but it's, it's really interesting how you really, I mean, your, your bread and butter obviously is adventure photography in the sense of mm -hmm. you're catching these incredible athletes doing what they do best, all these insane stunts and, and whatever mm -hmm. they do. But at the same time, the, the portraiture fits in so perfectly well, which most people maybe not, may not even think that that would be the case, but it really fits in with exactly yeah. their sport. You need to show the face of, what they're who these people are so it's 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 kind of it, it really does go hand in hand for you to do that yeah and also the behind the scenes stuff or the in-between moments right right are more important actually than the action the action stuff's the easiest to get the portraits and the in-between stuff are technically the most valuable shots i create as well yeah um monetarily but the action stuff's more engaging eye candy so to yeah. speak so um, even motocross last summer, did a motocross shoot just for, to try out some stuff, you know, a little bit of skiing and stuff. So it's a wide range. Um, yeah. This is another rock climbing image from last year. And this is one of the most recent shoots I had for the GFX 100S downhill skateboarders in your neck of the woods in California. Yeah, that's right. And I, I obviously watched your video for those that haven't been on Michael's website. We'll uh, we'll we'll put, post a link to that so you can see it. But um, you may have recognized that image. Go go back to the skating one. So people, yeah, you may have recognized this image from the GFX S, right? The hundred S. One hundred um, S. Yeah, it's the main image they're using for the campaign right now on right, their website exactly. and around places. Yeah. So as as you mentioned, you are working very closely with them, and you you help them. I, there was another image that I saw of the rock climbing that I I know was the one that launched the GFX one hundred. Um, yep. so that's pretty incredible that they're using your main images for their 
promotional materials. Um, now, from all these images, I'm seeing that you, you're obviously using a, a lot of uh, external light. As I'm sorry, a lot of uh, flashlight. You, you have to obviously yeah. because a lot of these are such a high Same. speed. Right, uh, your your motocrosses and and uh, mm -hmm. the, the kayak, all that work. You just you will not be able to get that same look and feel if you don't bring those external lights uh, for the flashes. Can you can you talk a little bit about your your process and sort of and obviously the complexity of it too? Because you're not in a studio, you're not in a controlled environment. Yeah. There's so many different more elements that you have to take into account. Definitely, and it's. And it's kind of a long story about the lighting and it's just something I do to create something different. Like this image looks complete. This is lit with a strobe. Yep, it's yep. on a bridge above the climb. So uh, this is actually the first image I really created with that technique, which was called hypersync maybe a decade ago. Mm -hmm. um, Pocket Wizard came up with this and then a Link Chrome kind of perfected it um, so that it allows me to do stuff like like this shot, you know, right, where right. It's, I'm shooting at eight thousandth of a second with the medium format camera and using strobes and lighting the subject. And it's it's not that I couldn't get images without this, but, you know, something like this where the strobes 50 feet away from the climber yeah, above them, right. you know, um, it's the look and feel. It, it just it really it's a different just, look. Exactly. It completes the and image it and it separates. Makes it draws... I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It, it just draws you in a little bit more. It really focuses on the subject while still keeping, mm -hmm. you know, the composition to, to, to be, your eye doesn't bounce around in the wrong places. It really sort of like highlights exactly what you wanted to do without overpowering the subject. So it's, so it doesn't look fake, uh, even though well, you obviously nailed it. strokes. That's, is that, is that right? That's did I, perfect did I, did explanation I to all, well, <laughs> uh, from one photographer to another there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because like this image, it highlights the climber, and it, there's kind of this weird, you know, difference in gradations with yeah. this image in particular, but it really, you know, you look at maybe this, the sunset at the bottom and then all of a sudden you realize there's a climber up there, but it really highlights the subject in a way. And um, it also involves carrying a, a lot of gear, you, you know, me. like <laughs> that hundreds know. of pounds of lighting gear, yeah. you know, and I'm using the Elinchrome 1200 watt second battery powered strobes that, you know, I lug all over the place. Sometimes we're, high, we're you know, some of those kayaking images Back I, here, I, you know, we're carrying hundreds of pounds of strobes into here. So, and there's actually a really great. That. There's a great BTS. If anyone goes on the on his website um, under your about page, there's a great BTS video that you did specifically for the shoot about how you mm -hmm. how you really got the shot. Um, so I, yeah. I highly recommend that. That was actually a really a really great BTS that you did that. Um, let's talk that really seems quickly to be about like every client. Well, I think it's sharing here and then. I think that's, I mean, it really depends on your client, but obviously I think on the, on the types of clients that you have, obviously a Red Bull, um, mm -hmm. you know, even Fuji that's trying to showcase the strength and the speed of their cameras that are medium format, they need these, um, what's the word for high intensity sort of images where it needs to show action. It needs to show fluidity within your shot. So you kind of have to bring all that gear. There's no other way of, you can't really do that in post. I think it will look really fake in post. No, you so. can't do it in post, but. Right. And it, you know, it helps separate me professionally to do this. Right. There's, there's a few other people doing that kind of stuff, but there's not many. What sort are... of, so with your settings for something like that, obviously shooting medium format for those that are, that are not familiar between the difference of 35 mil and medium format, medium format is a beast within its own self in terms of, even though the, the, the settings are the same of the camera, obviously your ref stop, your ISO, all of that remains like a regular 35, shooting medium format does bring that extra layer of complexity, dare I say it. Uh, I'm not sure how, you, how you'd describe <laughs> shooting, um, uh, obviously your, your shutter rate. Depends on the camera. Yeah, it I does. mean, with the new Fujifilm cameras, it's not a whole lot different than shooting with a DSLR or you know a full frame medium or full frame camera. The mirrorless, mm -hmm. uh, the mirrorless full frame cameras. I mean, if you're shooting with phase one, so that's a whole different beast in terms of slowing you down. The yeah, autofocus my... is decently fast on my medium format cameras, but not quite well, as fast I, as full frame. And I think I, if I could, in the in the simplest form, I think the main difference that I'm noticing from a 35 mil to a medium format is your number of focus points 
and the shutter speed. To me, those are the two biggest things. Because on a medium on a on a medium format, especially for me, speaking from a phase one, I'm a phase one shooter. I have one focus point, and yeah. I can only shoot one frame a second. Maybe it it got a little bit better with with some of the recent firmware updates, but it's still you know if you're trying to get ten frames a second at 150 megapixels, that's just never going to that. What well, for now anyway? It's not going to happen. So it it makes it that much more difficult that you really have to know your gear with one focus point for you to be able to track that subject that you're shooting um, to, to really kind of nail the shot. So, well, it's, and the Fujifilms have 400 and something focus points. I mean, I don't they're like a that. normal mirrorless camera. They shoot five wanna, frames I, a second. I don't they can actually that. track subjects. Oh, I come mean, on. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's closer to full frame and its capabilities right. than it is, which is, you know, I used to own a Hasselblad that had one focus point and that's like your phase one much yeah. slower. But it's just, you know, for what I do, it makes more sense. And that's, um, and then that's, you know, sometimes your iPhone is the best tool that you have. It really is depending on what you're trying to shoot. You know, yeah. if I'm shooting something that's fast, I need a high frame rate. I probably won't use a phase because it's just, not, I'm not going to be able to get that yeah. shot. Or I'll have to spend five times the amount of time trying to time it to be just perfectly right. And exactly. that's, it puts a lot of pressure on the crew and everything else. Um, well, and for yeah. a lot of my shots, they're set up. So that's the thing people see in the behind the scenes. It's like that athlete or that set those athletes can do it. Yeah. You know, we're shooting the lighting, especially when you set up lighting, as you know, once you set up more than one strobe or two strobes, then it's happening right where those strobes are pointed. Yeah. And then you can just have the athletes, if possible, do it over and over and over. Yeah, and that's and, and it. you only get one picture every time they come through anyway, like in terms of the skaters. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really matter what camera you're shooting at that point. You pre-focus and it's just your timing of pushing the button at the right time. Uh, yeah. And hopefully the, especially with external factors like um, the canoe guys, they're hopefully they're going down the same line. <laughs> so any small well, shift. Well, that was uh, a specific one that's yeah, yeah tougher because they're having serious impact every time they hit. So that's being like yeah. in a car accident every time they go over the falls. Yeah, I know. So they, you don't they get have that broken many their backs. Yeah, you got to be you got to be cautious of your of your subject. Um, you mentioned that you've got some shoots coming up with Red Bull, which which, from what I'm seeing as well as obviously from what you just said, it looks like things are slowly opening up. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on COVID because I'm sure everyone's sick to death about COVID <laughs> and how you're doing. And you know, I, I think it's an, obviously it's an important thing that we should touch upon, but I really don't want it to be the main yeah. focus. Um, really briefly, how did you? handle your time off did you were you busy were you finishing personal projects how did that go for you um luckily in 2019 i had an epically great year um and i had a lot of savings already so it wasn't financially that scary yeah it was just you know last march literally a year ago things shut down yeah um, i had a few assignments as you saw that fujifilm assignment with the skaters and a couple other things Locally, I haven't been on a plane, but I did a few personal shoots, but honestly, I've been playing guitar and just hanging out. Um, and <laughs> Learning new skills. <laughs> you know, no, I've played guitar for a long time, but I never had time to play. So that's, I've just been rocking out here at the house. Um, that but I mean, and paying attention, doing lots of Zoom talks and doing yeah. what I could for clients who are having, you know, difficulties. Did that, so. have you found that to be difficult in the sense of, uh, from a creative perspective, maybe because you were going at a thousand miles an hour for so long, kind of the same as me, I was always really busy. And then yeah. all of a sudden it just came to a grinding halt. I think it was really nice for a month or two to kind of yeah. take a breather and just not think about mm -hmm. work for a second. But then did it, did you have the same reaction as I did when it came to like month four, five, six, I'm like, I'm getting itchy. I need to start doing. I, I, feel, I felt the need to continue to be creative. And it, it was just really difficult from a motivational perspective to do that. Obviously, there were no clients. You had to focus more on, mm -hmm. or very few clients. I, ha I had three shoots last year, client work, which yeah. is insane. Um, did you find that difficult to remain creative? Or were you just like, I am taking this one out. I'm enjoying a beer and playing guitar. And I'm cool with it. I'll wait for it when it comes out. You know, yeah, I, I found out that my creative juices don't flow that much unless I'm traveling and hanging out with amazing athletes. Because a lot of my, yeah. 
reason to be a photographer is because I love documenting world-class athletes doing what they do in these incredible locations. And I mean, I, I definitely shot some stuff and I had three or four assignments last year, but yeah, I mean, and also part of me as an adventure guy, I've been in so many mountain scenarios where it's just like storms are raging outside and you just have to sit in your tent for a week. Yeah. Right. And so I think 25, 30 years of being an adventurer has taught me how to just chill out and relax and wait for the storm to pass. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, it feels like it's starting to pass with the vaccines, but we'll see, you know, if yeah. that's actually the case. I think it's gonna be a much longer process than the next few months. I, I think you you might be in a, in a in a rare group of people because everyone that I've spoken to, regardless of what creative field they're in, they, I think they're struggling with the fact that they're struggling with the uncertainty and they're struggling with the, with remaining creative and wanting to create work when quote technically quote unquote it's not going anywhere you know what i mean like it's the, mm -hmm. i want to create something but yeah it, it, it will feel like no one cares of what i'm doing because it's not being seen to then to get picked up by someone else oh i, I want to do this and lead to yeah. another job so i think a lot of people are still struggling creatively um and I, and I do want to mention for the people that are on right now, if you have any questions, uh, either for myself or obviously more for, for Michael, please um, jot them down and they'll get passed on to me. And we're going to do a Q&A towards the end of, uh, end of the session. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. So um, do that. Should they put those a, in the chat or in the Q&A section? Or? Yeah, you can just jot them down, put them. Johnny, will uh, uh, Johnny, a wonderful person in, in the background that... Uh, He's going to help us out with um, going through those and we'll just get them answered towards the end. Um, or, or if you have a question right now, as it comes up, just, cool. just jot it down. And we'll, we'll, if we see it, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll jump on it. Um, what are your next projects? You said you were going back with Red Bull. So Red Bull's kicking it back up again. That's, that's, that's yeah, good yeah. to hear. It's my first assignment in a year with them, which is unusual because usually I have three or four a year. Yeah. Uh, so back with the Red Bull Air Force again. Uh, we'll see you know, how that comes about. There, it's their team training camp, which I've photographed several times. And it's the whole team. And I don't know, I've had so much fun with these guys. They're good friends at this point after yeah. 15 assignments or so. And usually, you know, I think they requested me this time, which is great. And when I show up, they've already got five ideas on what they want to do, something that I couldn't even dream up. And we'll have like multiple helicopters and planes so I can shoot out of one plane while they're jumping out of another one and or I'll be in the same jump plane with them. So that so that's, uh, so. that's I've got a question about that actually. Do, are you with your work? Do you normally go to your existing clients and say, "Hey guys, I have this idea, or I have these three or four ideas that I want to do. What do you think?" Or do they more come to you and say, "We have these five ideas. What do you think of them? Can you ex can you execute it? And how? And is your job basically to try and execute mm -hmm. their vision, or is it more of a collaborative effort where Hey, we're thinking about doing this. What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. Is it, or which way does that, does that work? It's both. It just depends on the gig. Um, oftentimes they have something already happening, you know, with these athletes shoots, the athletes usually drive the ideas. Okay. But yeah. oftentimes I'm in communication with the athletes and we're kind of dreaming up ideas together. Yeah. Okay. Or like Fujifilm or some of the, you know, some of the stuff where it's more to promote a product in the photography world. You know, they come to me and they're like, we want you to show off this product. What can we do? And then, right, you know, right. I'll throw some ideas out. Um, it just depends on the gig. You know, and sometimes it's like they have a very firm idea and I'm just, you know, the person they call to execute that idea. Um, and maybe hopefully add some creativity to take it beyond what they thought was possible. Right. So, so with this gig coming up, what's the plan? How much gear do you have? What are you going to be doing? how do you prepare for it mentally, especially taking a year out? And, you know, do you feel like you're kind of dusty yeah. and you, you're a little bit on the nervous <laughs> side or you've been doing this for 25 years and it's just another day at the office? Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's not just another day at the office because anytime I'm with those guys, you know, they're the world's most elite skydivers wingsuit. I mean, they've been in Hollywood movies right, multiple right. times. So these guys, they've been they're in Transformer Transformers. Guys. They were in there Point you go. Break. I mean, these guys are rock stars, literally. Yeah. Um, and they are Superman and Superwoman. Yeah. I mean, they fly every other day. 
in the sky without, I mean, in their wingsuits. So it's kind of, it's an amazing thing to hang out with them in terms of mind expansion of what's possible. Yeah. Um, we, we've done so much in the past. It'll be interesting to try something new, we've mounted remote cameras. They do a lot of filming for Hollywood by mounting red, you know, digital cinema cameras on their person. Um, yeah. So there's all kinds of options. I'll just have to see what's going on and then we'll assess it from there. So there's not really a plan per se. It's just take, you know, I'll take three, two systems, a whole bunch of lenses. I'm driving out just not to get on a plane. I'll take, you know, lighting gear, but I'm not going crazy with lighting gear because it'll be mostly for portraiture. Now, are you um, going to be jumping out with them or are you just shooting straight from the plane as soon as they jump out? I'll be in the plane. Any shots in the air will be remote cameras that I mount on them and then discuss with them what I'm trying to get. Um, I'm that not sounds, a skydiver. That sounds I wish complicated. I... <laughs> remote well, triggering really... when someone's skydiving, that sounds like there's, that's a lot of technical issues <laughs> to overcome on that it's, one. It's not too hard. It's just put your camera in time-lapse mode and have it shoot three to five frames per second the whole time. Oh, interesting. I thought you were look, and then, watching it on a screen and firing as they're going down and you were gonna lose connection. No, off it's too fast feet. for that. And yeah, so okay. Andy, a few of the guys who do a lot of motion and cinema work. And so if you'd like draw it on a napkin or something or just give them an idea of what you're looking for, they can get it for you pretty easily. Copy that, um, yeah. I wish okay. I was a skydiver. I wanna go skydiving. Maybe it'll happen this time with them, but um, the reality is me trying to photograph them as a skydiver yeah. would be like me trying to photograph a professional Formula One driver at when 200 miles them. an hour in a separate car, like shooting out the window. It's yep. just not no. going to happen because I, you know, they have 20 years of skydiving experience. You're probably going to be more of a hindrance to them um, and it probably might totally. ruin the shot. Totally. <laughs> so, um, um, so. This is one of the few. I'm usually hanging off the cliff or swimming in the ocean or, you know, interacting with the athletes because I can actually do that. But this one is kind of unique. Yeah. And honestly, I think you can, everybody's seen the picture of people falling out of the sky. It's been done like a million times. So it's, it's more difficult to do something actually kind of unique. Well, like that was going to be my next. With the moon, you know, that we showed earlier. That was going to be my next question. It's, it's also, you know, trying to remain creative and do something that hasn't been done before, because there's only so many ways you can shoot a skydiver, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's not, there's only so many different elements that you can bring in to make it a standout image. Are you, are you thinking about that all the time? Or is it more of, I know it's been done before, but I really want to perfect it and, and kind of take it three degrees left to make it better? Or is it, I'm going to try and do something that's way out of the wackiness or, you know, it's that kind of mental juggling, I guess that mm -hmm. you can, you can do, but this just, this is a very unique shoot. I think this is doing something with a bike is different because you can have powder and paint mm -hmm. flying behind it. You can't really yeah. do that with these guys. So it's, yeah. Well, we've talked about it over the years. I mean, that moonshot was pretty unique. I don't think that's ever been done before, but I've never um, seen that. <laughs> And that actually, all of LA, it happened right at sunset during drive time in LA. And it was on national news in 20 minutes. People thought a meteorites had fallen into <laughs> downtown LA. So we had to get the pictures out like right away to tell people what happened. <laughs> but to answer your question, it's a mixture. You know, sometimes I'm dreaming up very unique images that I maybe have been tried. Yep. And maybe I'm trying to take it three degrees better and add my right. lighting to it, which is different. The lighting stuff is quite unique. You know, I definitely have created images like some surfing images where we use five strobes and lit the surfer from the beach, you know, from that much like throw two football fields away. Wow. Um, and I didn't show that image, but, you know, people can see the behind the scenes of that on my website as well. And that's never been done before. Yeah. So sometimes you can do that, but never done before is really difficult because there's not a whole lot that hasn't been done. When are you going to put you know. a strobe on a drone and it follows the surfer while he's surfing? There you go. Boom. Done. Well, we've got other ideas with multiple helicopters. <laughs> it's just, I got to find the Red Bull's got to come up with a budget for that one. I mean, there's things <laughs> I would love to put a strobe on somebody's helmet for a skydiver and then a camera on a, somebody else's strobe and set that up. That Maybe sounds I'll talk awesome. To them about trying that this time, you know, that, sounds, that would be yeah. interesting. 
Um, we just got, uh, I'm going to go through some of these questions because they are rolling, yeah. but this one is applicable. So it said, uh, you, you know, you talked about carrying a lot of the lighting gear around to capture some of the climbing and kayaking. Um, would you say that your gear adds to your photos for pure stylistic reasons or does it make your job easier as far as getting the best light in certain scenarios? It definitely does not make my job easier. And usually, <laughs> just to be clear, there's assistance because I can't carry 200 pounds worth of gear on my own. I can carry 100 pounds of gear and have done that a lot. That's just part of the job as an adventure photographer, carrying huge packs. But oh, I know it. <laughs> um, it does creatively make you a better photographer because you have some pre-production, some content that you've thought through, so that when you get there, you have a pretty good idea of what you're trying to do. Um, and it slows you down, as you know, Andre, that, mm -hmm. so there's a plan and you're creating something that you can't see with your eye. So it's something quite unique and creative in that respect. Yeah, it's you not have to say to... that it's better than available light photography. It's just different. Well, I think, I think for all shoots, myself included, I'm sure you, you hopefully you're the, you, you're the same way. You, you may go to in a shoot knowing that you have the shot that you want to get. But then you get to that mm -hmm. particular location. There's only so much research you can do through Google Maps or trying to find a mm -hmm. spot until you physically get there and you look at left and right, that tree, that would look really good. You can't, you may have an idea of what you want to get, but then there's five or six others, 10 even, that are going to be even better than what you originally had in mind. So being reactive to the environment with your gear, um, totally. I wanted it in this position to begin with, but actually, if we go on the other side and a little bit under shooting straight up, that's mm -hmm. going to be way better. So I think that's, that's, that's some good piece of advice that I got, which, which has been helpful for me is always have a plan, but be really flexible going left and right. And if, if an image is just not working, yeah. don't waste your entire time and your team and everyone else's, you know, for you to go. This is not working. And work. Keep making, yeah. yeah, keep making that guy go over 20, 30 times. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna break his back. So being conscious yeah. of of your team and everything around you and being reactive, I think, is really, especially for what you do, because you everything's so fast paced and yeah. dangerous. And time of day is already considered before we even get there. Usually, right, exactly. you know, we've scouted the location, but sometimes you got to do something for a client or for somebody at high noon. And right. how are you going to make that look good? You know, that's when you start pulling out the strobes and. Put the yeah, sun overpower the sun. Exactly. Yeah. Which is a lot of those shots, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, trying Good to question. Um, yeah, that is. I mean, I'm I'm trying to think to that, that question on my on my side of things because I, so I shoot medium form and I shoot I'm I'm a phase one shooter and again, the gear can be really heavy as 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 you know. I think the heaviest combination. For the phase one with the with the heaviest lens it's just under nine pounds um so wow. sometimes you have to yeah. carry that handheld for a while it does come with a free gym membership my my left arm is is bigger than my <laughs> right um but it's just it's just one of those things you take into consideration you you just get used to it mm -hmm. because you know the files are going to be absolutely beautiful and and one of some of the best in, yeah. in the industry so you take that into account it's part of your planning it's part of you know how do you sit down with your team and say what are the things that we need to overcome? Um, and as a professional, that's part of what you're selling to the client is, hey, I'm right. going to produce the highest quality images. I'm going to use all kinds of stuff that your average photographer probably wouldn't use just because either a, they don't have access to it or can't afford it or don't know how to use it. Um, you know, and that's the 25 years thing kicking in. There. So, so I'm really glad you, you went to that direction because I, I I'm curious to know the industry that we're in has been changing quite rapidly. I would think put take, take away COVID. Yeah. Let's just say COVID yeah. never happened. The industry really has been changing. And from what I'm seeing, a lot of companies are going to, you know, your, in inverted commas, your Instagram photographers that are not as well mm -hmm. established that are, that are not as technical. Yeah. And from experiences that I've seen from other photographers and even myself that a client went with someone else, they, they didn't get what they were looking for. They, they struggled. And then they went to someone that, you know what, I've been doing this for 25 years. Yes. I'm going to be more expensive, yeah. but you know what, you're going to get that shot. Have you, have you had that happen to you in your career? Yeah, I mean, where... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, have you, have you had that happen in your career where you were, not used for a particular job because they wanted to give it to someone else, maybe because it was a budget constraint. And then 
that didn't work out as well as they hoped. And then they ultimately came back to you anyway, because yes, you're more expensive, but you're going to get what they want. I've definitely lost jobs to people who have more followers on Instagram. That's for sure. Me too. Um, but um, isn't that sad? <laughs> well, I mean, some, there's some influencers on Instagram, some of my peers who are Nat Geo photographers who are amazing photographers. They just happen to have huge followers as well. So that's kind of the perfect storm for them. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I have such a unique look with all this flash stuff that there's not so many other people. If they see that on my website and they're like, we want that. And they start looking around at a bunch of other photographers they are like, well, like we, we can't get this that. Guy. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's very helpful. That's why I started the lighting stuff, honestly, because it separated me from the 500 other adventure photographers out there in the world professionals. And does um, the client understand the complexity? Because do you have to explain to always. them? always. Yeah. And that's, I, I would think that would be something that would be quite difficult for you when you're actually pitching an idea of just literally the complexity. I think some of them would just think, oh, you're just going to turn up with a camera and that's going to be the look I'm going to get. But I, may, many don't really fully understand what really it takes to kind of make that shot happen. Yeah. So and it's always it's just, fun when somebody from the company comes on the shoot and sees it. It's like, oh my God, like, this is a proper. <laughs> That's a lot more difficult than I thought it would be just <laughs> physically, you know, not even the photography part, just like, yep. you know, I'll hand them a backpack and say, here, can you take these things? And it's, you know, way lighter than what we're carrying, but right, right. to have them be part of the crew. And I don't know, yeah. that's kind of fun to, ex to expose to them the outdoors and the way that I interact with it, which is usually a lot more intensive than what they're used to. Um, yeah, and more and just, exciting, you know, so they have a blast on the shoot. Well, it just makes it more personal for them too. And I think, I think by, by, I, I would love to have more clients actually come on set, to be honest, because mm -hmm. like you said, I mean, even some of the, you know, me shooting a product, um, a watch, it, it took me and my team of three people close to four hours just to get the lighting yeah. right before we were even like firing shots. We were literally yeah. playing, seeing what was bouncing. And, and again, watch watch photography is one of the most complex things you can do, Difficult. but it's, yeah. it's it's that level of, you know, they see an image and they go, oh yeah, that's great. Can you can you make 20 of those by tomorrow? It's like that yeah. just, it, it doesn't work that way. So I think there's definitely an education level that a lot of clients- They see how much work it is and they see what they're paying for quite clearly, I think. Right. And that's, uh, that's, that's why my initial question was when, when they go to a photographer that is maybe less established or more of an Instagrammer where they can take quick shots, they're more like sort of street photography where it's on the run kind of quick thing. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is very evident when you have someone that needs 10 hours to do something as opposed to someone that needs half an hour. So it's, it's just yeah. a different style. And it depends um, on the client, you know, some clients, it, yeah. it works great for them. You know, I'm not in that realm. And, right. you know, you price yourself out of 90% of the clients if you're, you know, really good at what you do, like you and I are. Yep. So, you know, it's- Because I've, I've lost plenty of jobs because of that exact notion. Or, or they yeah. looked at my Instagram as like, oh, you only have 10,000 followers. If I had 20, it wasn't going to make me a better photographer. <laughs> it's, or if I have 5,000, it's, it's, I, I, I detest that notion that my skill level is being based on how many followers I have. You, you look at my yeah. work and understand and what I'm trying to do. There's no equivalency there. And I've lost more jobs because they see how much I was going to charge than right. how many followers I have. And they're like, wow, okay, we can't afford you. Um, but, but, so. but then it goes back to my initial concept. They go with someone cheaper and then they realize that's not the look that they want. And then they're just going to end up spending more money if, than if yeah. they just hired you to begin with. So anyway, we're getting a little bit off topic, yeah. but that's um, a another, hole. Question, <laughs> another question just came in. What's your biggest challenge that, oh, that we both faced in your careers and how did you overcome it? We could be there for a few hours. Uh, yeah, we could be I there need, forever. I mean, it's, I need a it's, beer I don't for know this it's one. A big challenge. It's many, many little, everything's a challenge. I mean, there's like a thousand little challenges every, every yeah, job. We, um, yep. every day. Um, I think the biggest challenge is just sticking with it, especially early on yep. and having confidence in yourself that you can make this happen and, and putting in the hours and the work to, you know, improve your craft and get your photography, keep moving your photography up, you know, into higher levels of complexity and 
amazing images. Um, yeah, I, I think I think in the shortest answer, that's probably I would one hundred percent agree with you. I think I think there are a lot of photographers that think this is a lot easier um, to do when, when they're initially starting out. Uh, that again, they don't understand that for you to get that shot, it doesn't take eight hours. It took twenty five years to cut out all the errors yeah. that was going to make your shoot that much more efficient and you perfected your craft. Um, I think a challenge, a challenge for me is just not staying motivated, but constantly wanting to come up with something that's different. You know, I, I don't want to shoot a watch like everyone else has, or I don't want to shoot a campaign like everyone has. I think it's having that desire to want to want to do something better than the last person yeah. and where do I find my inspiration? So I'm not copying their style, but I'm adding my own, my own flair to it. And not, you, you're not always going to do that. Um, yeah. I've been told that I have no creativity by a few people, which is, <laughs> oh, I think that's, a, that's a challenge too, is, wow. you know, how do you deal with, with um, nasty people the on the internet too? Yeah. Wow. Um, so I, I think that's, um, and how do I overcome it? I tend to just ignore it. I, th I don't think that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, unless it's well, something I mean, that's a proper criticism. Okay. Totally. But, but you choose who gives you criticism, you know, in terms of right. your respect for them, them being your peers or somebody exactly. you very much respect. And then you accept that and take that in and change stuff. I mean, you were a pro tennis player for a long time. This mm -hmm. is no different than being a pro tennis player. It's just not playing tennis. It's exactly. know, creating images. It's just hard, it comes craft. down to hard work. You know, that's what it really comes down to. Um, both on the business and the creative side, I would say the business is way harder than the creative for me, at least. Yeah. And I think a lot of photographers don't have, a lot of photographers don't have both, both worlds sort of down to a science. I think you're either a photographer and you don't understand much about business or you, you more on the business side and you don't know a great deal about photography. I've, I've met very yeah. few people. I think you're one of the few ones with that has a really good grasp on obviously on both of them. Um, and that's how that, and, and again, that's how a lot of photographers get taken advantage of by agents and creatives and all that kind of stuff. But that's that's mm -hmm. that's another beer conversation to have on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I I, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 definitely a tough industry. Um, it's uh, being a good, especially being a good photographer, is not cheap. Um, regardless no. of what you do, you you I I. I cannot stress enough the importance of a good retoucher and the relationship that you have with that retoucher, especially on the stuff that I do. Um, yeah. You can only take an image and so for far. Me, but... I do most of my own retouching, so it's not quite the same. Um, See, for me, I, I do I can send do... stuff to retouchers occasionally. I can do my own landscape and aerial. I can, I'm fine mm -hmm. with that. But when it comes to skin tones, when it comes to high-end product and creating some sort of CG background, can I do it? Yes. Is it going to be good? No. So what's the point? It's going to look like, it's going to look like yeah. crap. So I'd rather send it out. So um, knowing your strengths and weaknesses and working on those, I think that's also crucial. And the fact, and be humble. Definitely. You are not, yeah. let me, let me, let me break it. Let me, let me like lay it out for everyone. You are not the greatest photographer that's ever lived <laughs> and nor will you ever be, you know, the whole concept yep. of always learn, always be willing to learn until the day you die. No one is going to be the greatest. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's, that's one of the things that I've kept myself going. I'm, I, I need to keep learning. I keep, I need to keep making mistakes um, and you only learn through mistakes. So um, that's, that was a big well one for me. Um, what else can we cover? We've got, um, there's a question here. Oh, it's from, for me. Uh, you mentioned how I'm limited in some ways about how quick you can shoot and buy your focus points. What are some tips you have for setting up shots for moving subjects with those kind of limitations? Yeah, see, that's that's tricky. I just did a shoot for Aston Martin where we were in the desert on a uh, airport runway. So we were shooting two cars. Um, and that that was just a challenge, again, because of the time of day. We had to get all the way out there and we were losing light fairly quickly, which further complicates the situation. We were using no external strobes. So everything was done in camera. We we actually set up the the the, the phase on a on a rig that was built in front of a huge truck. So it was on a gimbal, and I was firing it remotely using one of those Atlas, the Nebula things, whatever they're called, the the, the focus pullers. Um, hmm. it, it was 
it was tough. It was tough to be tethered that far away because the camera is obviously all the way in the front of the car. I was on a laptop. I was live viewing, checking focus all the time and trying to trying to hit wow. the shutter. So it it's not it's not easy. I think your way is definitely a lot better by allowing you to reduce your ISO and increase your shutter speed by getting some more light flooding the subject. So I definitely think that's a good way to go. Um, or change your cameras. You know, don't shoot. Yeah. Don't shoot medium format when you can only get a frame a second unless you're prepared to do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So depends on what you're shooting. Um, if totally. I'm shooting water that I'm dropping from the top, I can do that 50,000 times a day in my studio. But if I have an entire crew behind me, then I'm losing light um, from, from the sun going down. I'm going to get a lot of annoyed people if I'm wanting to get the same stuff over and over 50,000 mm -hmm. times. Um, so that answers that. What are your expectations now that things are slowly opening up? Where do you see where do you see this industry kind of going? Because I know a lot of we, I know we've lost a lot of photographers um, with this that I'm not sure. If we're I gonna imagine, get back. yeah. You know, I think those who survived, it's going to be. We'll see. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? I don't think we're out of the woods yet. The vaccine's great, and science is saving our buns here. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of variants. I think we're going to be struggling with COVID for the next three to five years mm -hmm. before we get back to normal, normal. Um, Is there going to be a back to normal, normal? That's the other question. Well, that's I'm a good not, question. Know. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure they thought the same thing in 1918 when they had mm -hmm. the Spanish flu or the influenza. Um, but it will get back to normal at some point, hopefully, unless something else comes along. But I mean, in terms of the industry, I think we're going to find ways to cope with it. I think we're going to find ways to deal with it. We already are. I mean, I've had COVID officers on my shoots already so that they're watching yep. us, you mm -hmm. know, making Same sure we're staying socially distanced and being somewhat safe as we can be testing every day on a shoot. Um, so there's ways to deal with it. And hopefully, you know, I'm excited to get back out there and start doing these assignments and traveling. I mean, that was one of the things that I love about my job is I traveled though some years like 2019 I traveled nine months and I was kind of like okay I gotta slow down so <laughs> I want to keep it reasonable <laughs> yeah you know my dog didn't even know who's this guy that comes yeah. every <laughs> two weeks and stays for two days and then leaves you know um, so I this think the one the thing longest. with COVID oh, sorry go ahead. go ahead no no go ahead one of the interesting things with COVID is just how much I enjoyed staying at home isn't that scary? I've been traveling <laughs> six to eight months for 25 years. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm home for like a year. It's like, wow, this is kind of nice to just stay at home for a little bit. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I think hopefully the jobs can come back. Um, and the same way, I, it'll be interesting to see what the industry does. You know, we're still on this trajectory of lower prices are still going down. Yeah. You know, there's more and more photographers out there even though there might be fewer professionals that made it through covid right you know the camera gear I think is it's, getting amazing so there's i think it's going to be interesting also what from what i'm seeing as well um it's going to be really interesting to see what the clients want in terms of content um mm -hmm. is that has that shifted uh, i know for a fact with a lot of the creative agencies that i was dealing with that i was speaking even just during staying in contact with zooms during during covid they were like we we're still talking to the clients, but they don't know what they want. They don't, they don't yeah. want to put out a campaign that's going to offend or do something silly or not have the impact that they want. So they'd rather just hold off. And I think that then led to the drought of photographers and the ones that the one, the few shoots that they were doing, they used photographers or creatives that they've worked with in the past. So for example, obviously mm -hmm. yourself, you've got a really solid relationship with Red Bull. I can't imagine mm -hmm. Red Bull, if they're going to do one shoot a year, they're not going to come to me and say, oh, I like yeah. what you did with this thing. Can you do the same? They're going to go to someone that they've worked with before. They trust. They know the quality that they're going to get. It's not mucking about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and because of that, then it cuts out a lot of opportunities for some other guys that they would have yeah. done 10 shoots and given you eight because they know what they want. And you know what? We're going to take a gamble on two guys or two, two girls and see, see yeah. what they're going to do. So that's my worry of how long is that going to continue for? Um, 
But but we all went, we both went through that early in our careers where we are the person on the outside and we yep. had to create amazing work to get on the inside with these clients. And so it just comes down to persistence and really perfecting your craft, should we say. Yeah. You know? um, I think there's also the way marketing is working because that's been a major shift in the last decade away from print media and yep. even TV to influencers and social media you know, YouTube videos. I mean, the way marketing is happening right now is completely different than a decade ago. Right. And whether or not you can deal with that as a content creator, whether you can shoot video and stills, whether you are savvy enough to tap into that marketing to help the client out is a huge part of whether you get hired now. Which can I tell you some, followers come in? Can I, can I tell you one thing that really worries me for the next five years? I think you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I may struggle. <laughs> Which is, which is the, you know, the rapid evolution of CG work. Yeah. It is getting so good. It's mm -hmm. scary. It's scary good what they can create now using these programs where you create the shell of, of a product that you can then manipulate and move the light, an, an artificial light yeah. all around it. And you put it, you render it, and there you go, done. It gives yeah. you that flexibility that I can spend 20 hours in a studio with my guys to shoot up two faces of a watch that they can do the exact same thing from multiple angles, multiple times, whenever they want. Same with cars, yep. um, same with uh, again, products. That, yeah. that it's probably really about the same me. price. Yeah. It, it, well, and, and, and as, as computers and programs get stronger and faster, they're going to be able to render these so much quicker. I know for a fact, my own retoucher, yeah is majorly doing CG work now. I mean, he still does retouching, obviously, wow. but it is is definitely seeing that shift. Again, you'll be fine, because I think it's gonna still be, you need to be oh, there. Because you want locations. real people doing real stuff, yeah. Exactly, but uh, 10, 15 years down the road, you may not be fine. I mean, who knows what they're gonna you know, come up with where well. I can put someone on a wave that's five times the size and yeah. doesn't actually exist in real world because that's the content that they're looking for. So, well, I mean, um, that's photography in the nutshell right now with Luminar and some of these softwares, you and I can replace skies with that software so easily. Can it's I a say how much I detest that? I detest Me too. I mean, the concept I think it's of horrific. That. It's awful what it's doing to the industry. And I, again, I need a lot of beers for this conversation because this is very close to my heart. <laughs> when I see these ads on Facebook, <laughs> oh, look, you can add clouds and you can do a little bit of mist yeah. right in front of, what is that? That you're not a photographer. Spend your time, get it right in camera. Or I am a huge believer of getting it as much right in camera as possible. Um, yeah. And not playing with these after effects that honestly just look like garbage. Plus the other, the other thing I can't, you and I, because we shoot medium format, we can't really use those things because if we shoot a car too low resolution yeah. exactly exactly right so i shoot a car and it's beautiful and it's sharp as hell and whatever and then i want to add a sky it's going to be crunchy it's not going to have Unless the same you shot resolution. The sky. yeah <laughs> but then and i don't need their yeah. software so exactly yeah. yeah that's um that's definitely um it's it's i think it's going to be very interesting for the industry which way how how that's going to impact it especially now with uh with with covid uh i know my mm -hmm. my retoucher for the first few months when I was doing work and I was doing my own personal work just to stay creative, creatively sharp, he was like, Andre, I have no time for you because I'm getting hit up by some clients that are not shooting, but they've shot something four years ago. And they said, we don't have any content. We need something and we don't want to spend money on it. So let's just use something we've already shot and make it new. So they were, he was either rendering stuff or trying to do some Photoshop work on it. Um, we sound really pessimistic, don't we? I am very I'm well, hopeful that things are moving on up, but it's it's still a gray area in terms of how it's going to ultimately look. It's just look. the realities of, you know, this has happened to the music world already in a much more yep. drastic way than we've seen. You know, making it as a band these days is really difficult unless you just like explode. Yep, exactly. But and I even think then, there's always room. For, yeah, there's always room for new talent, you know? It's going to yep. take it's not going to happen for everybody. And that's, I, I've been saying for the last 10 years or more um, in presentations and to my peers that the number of actual full-time professional photographers is going to get narrower and narrower, smaller and smaller percentage. And then there's going to be a lot more part-time professional photographers who have other jobs just because that's the reality of yep. the market. And there's also, as we've touched on, you know, clients from their perspective, 
there's way more choices, but they also need like 50 times more content than they've ever need needed before. And they can't afford to pay 50 times the money. So that's right. why the numbers are shrinking, you know, because an Instagram ad or whatever they're doing on social media only lasts for. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the same if you're lucky. quality. Yeah. Right. It doesn't have to be the same quality for it. Um, and but yeah, yeah I still want the same quality to attract eyeballs. Cause that's still the kicker is we still have to attract eyeballs. Um, I, I spoke to a, a car manufacturer that shall remain nameless, very well established, very well known, everyone knows it. And they, they, they were very frank to me. I spoke to the global head of marketing and they said, Andre, we do one or two big shoots a year. The rest of the stuff, we mm -hmm. give it out to influencers and it take, they take photos. And if yeah. we like one of them, we'll grab it and we use it for social media because to your point, it's not going to be the same level. So I 100% yeah. agree with you that the, the, the professional field is going to narrow, narrow, narrow. Um, people like yourself are always going to be used by by your you know the context that you have Red Bull because they know what you can deliver, um, but it, it's 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 going to be interesting and and now especially with with all these new cameras coming out I just read that Canon's coming out with a hundred megapixel everyone's going to have yeah I know I, literally this morning <laughs> wow okay yeah they I mean they've had it for up. a while they had the one fifty megapixel yeah. sensor for a while that they never never actually came out with but. Um, so anyway, go but ahead, still, we're no matter. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Still, no matter how good the cameras are, you have to have the idea. A camera does not take a picture, no matter how great it is. You know, you still have to like frame the thing up and make it happen in front of your lens or find it. Um, or and that's the art for, side. Or we yeah. wait for AI in five, five, uh, five years, and it does everything for you, <laughs> okay. and we will never need anything again. But yes, I 100% agree. Um, having a good camera. It will only enhance your vision and your composition skills and, and your technique. It's not going to guarantee an image Definitely. to be to be correct. Um, guys, we're coming up to an hour. Um, I know we had some questions. We I think we got through most of them. If anyone has any more questions, please shoot them in right now because this is kind of the last five, 10 minutes of Q&A. Um, and if I don't see anything coming up while we have a conversation, to we'll just wind it down. Um, yeah. Do you have any anything else to add on on your end? That um, any ideas, projects, any what do you want to be doing coming up? How's oh by the way, how's the new Fuji? How'd you like the Fuji? Oh, yes. it's great. I mean, it's tiny for what yeah. it is. It's ridiculous. I know. I, know. I mean, it's my number one camera now, just because it's lighter and I have to carry gear. So have you I don't noticed? Even know if I'll... Have you noticed a you... drop in the quality? Um, cause I know the specs are very similar to the, to the, to the big, the big brother. Um, yeah. it's obviously just, the it's, it's the bit depth. That's a little bit different in terms of the colors. I think this one's 14 bit, right? No, it's still 16 bit. It's, it's exactly it's, the same image quality. There's no oh, difference right? in the, in, I thought in that fact, was 14. this camera is a little bit better than the GFX 100. No, that was somebody put that out there a while ago with the rumors and it's, it's true 16 bit. Oh, wow. okay. truest that can actually be because there's no true 16-bit cameras really yep um, exactly they're all 15-bit whatever but um no image quality is phenomenal the only thing you're missing is the bigger grip on the bottom but for me i don't really care yeah um, and the battery life's not quite as good but image quality it's got a little bit better autofocus a little bit better ibis yeah which is the sensor stabilization mm -hmm. so i mean it's ridiculously i mean it's you know and for the and for the images. price and for the price for the price it's a I know. bargain exactly that's got that's hundreds of photographers emailing and calling me like what do you think and like jumping in they're selling a truckload of these cameras well i saw your blog about it so um if anyone hasn't yeah. read it yet definitely look up that blog if you want to learn more about the uh, the fuji 100s mm -hmm. um Awesome. Um, I think we're good to go. Um, just wanted to take the time to say thank you. Um, would love thank to have you. you back and discuss what else you're up to because I know you're always doing some really cool stuff. I'm always following your work. And thank we're going to give, we're going to provide a link for everyone to your website as well as um, getting familiar with who you are with your blogs. So awesome. thank you so much for coming on the first one. And that, I think that is a wrap. Thank you. On the and first thank you, F stoppers or F stop. Yeah, Mags for absolutely. having us. And heck, I'm coming to California. Maybe I'll look you up and see if you have time to do a backyard discussion, oh. socially distance or something. 
the studio is <laughs> going to be set up and it's going to probably have paint on the ceilings, the, um, exploding paint from nice. balloons that I'm going to be trying to do in 150 megapixels. So we'll, uh, awesome. we'll be doing that for sure. All right. Good stuff. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, good everyone stuff. that joined. And uh, keep an eye out for the next one because we've got some really cool guests coming up. So definitely check the, uh, the calendar on that front. Yeah.